Welcome to Dying Generation. I'm Buddy Williams, and with me is Stephen Scott Norfolk. <laughs> all right, man. Yeah, because there there have been a couple of changes this week. I don't know if you caught them all. Uh, one, we have a Facebook page. I saw that. Dying we have generation. we have like thirty five likes. Yeah, but we're asking you all to come like it so we can have 36, 37, a high number, you know, a really high number. That means you, Bill, our listener, Bill, please come like our page. That means you, Bill. Um, (laughs) We also have, this is one that you probably missed, but we also have a Twitter. We have a Twitter? Uh Uh-huh. What's it called? At Dying Generation. At Dying so Generation. Actually, actually, follow us there. After all of the banquet uh, TV dinners I had this week, I've been tweeting all morning. Really? So. <laughs> cool. <laughs> you might want to follow us. Might want to follow up on that one. Are we done? Are we done pimping for now? No, we're we're, we're really not done pimping, but. Uh, Go ahead, the, Pim. The week, Pim, Pim the week we the shot Bob, we um, we ate at Monica's before we shot Bob on mm-hmm. on somewhere there. My God, was Jeannie tweeting that whole night? Was she? Oh, oh, and it was, oh, it was great. I, I did for myself, but they smelled like just rotten eggs. <laughs> you know, it was like rotten eggs and sauerkraut sitting out in the sun. <laughs> So we're also on Stitcher. So what that is would Stitcher? Be I've never heard of that. It's it's like an alternative to iTunes. Okay. Uh, so you can go to the website. Of course, since I've never used Stitcher before, I didn't get this exactly right. But you could go to the Stitcher page, and like all undead cow shows would be there, and you could just listen to them in the web-based player or there's an app so you can download it to your phone or uh, tablet. Cool. So, which I'm pretty sure you can do that with iTunes as well. I'm sure you can. But it's just another alternative. And then finally, you can reach us at dying at undeadcow.com if you want to say something to us. Cheers and jeers really are accepted. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right, dude. So what's been going on with you, man? So what's been going on with me? Yeah. I just got out of jail this morning at 5 a.m. What was, happened? What were you doing in jail? I was in, I was in jail for six days. I have been driving my house about, uh, as our listener Bill knows. I live in my car, still am, and have been driving my house about without a uh, driver's license, uh, insurance, inspection sticker, or license tags. And on August 22nd of this year, I got four tickets for each thing, one, or one for each thing, four tickets separately. And then decided not to pay the tickets and got a failure to appear warrant along with four warrants for the other things. And Thursday morning, I'm asleep in my car, and all of a sudden I hear somebody go, Steve? And I look up, and there are two cops standing outside my car. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and they're like, you're sleeping in your car? I said, I actually live in my car. And they said, they don't leave you live inside the house? I said, nope, this is where I live. And they said, well, uh, do you know there are warrants out for your arrest? And I said, yes, I actually do. And they said, okay, well, you're going to have to come with us. I said, okay, can I put my socks and shoes on and, like, grab my wallet and stuff? And they were like, yeah. They were all very nice and polite. Of course, you know, they had to put the handcuffs on me, but not tight, you know, like I was a criminal or something. They put them on real loose, like Houdini loose, you know. Okay. And uh, I could have gotten out of those suckers just by, like, licking my wrist. And uh, put me in the car, drove me downtown, booked me, did the whole thing, and I sat in jail for six days. And the cool thing, though, was is that since I had had no prior felonies or anything like that, they made me a trustee. Which okay. means, since I had thirteen hundred dollars in fines, I would have had to have stayed there thirteen days after a hundred dollars a day. 
But since they made me trustee, it was two hundred dollars a day, so I only had to stay like six and a half. Okay. And so the entire time I'm there, all I had to eat was banquet TV dinners. You know those eighty-eight cent TV dinners. Uh huh. Okay. Every goddamn one comes with corn. Not good. Okay. Not not yeah. good when you have to, not good when you have to shit in front of people. Uh huh. You know, and stuff. But there were some things I learned. Do you, do you think maybe that was planned? I think so. Yeah, I think it was. You know, they're, they're like you know handing out the TV dinners with the corn and they're just like, like giggling. You know. <laughs> yeah. You know, just wait, just wait till eight p.m. Oh my god, it's going to be like a cacophony in here. And so, but there were some things I learned about about city jail as compared to like, say, prison. Okay. Right. Uh, most people. Well, let, let me put let me put it this way: um, the whole you know shower rape thing isn't a big thing in city jail, you know, okay. because most people are only there for like seven to fourteen days. Some people are there for thirty days, but it's not really enough time to work up like a real hankering, right? You yeah. know, and stuff. So you, you you pretty much just you know if you need something, you just like waddle off into a corner and you know squeeze one off quietly. At least that's what I did. Okay. And uh so uh you know that and while I was in there this was great. They they should have their own T V show, okay? They should have League City Police Department jail police show. There was a pregnant chick in the next cell to me with another woman, right? And she okay. faked contractions so she could get out of being in jail and go to the hospital. But before she left to the hospital, she pulled a little baggie of marijuana and cocaine out of her snatch and dropped them beside the toilet. You're pregnant. You do not shove cocaine up in your hoochie. You will kill yourself or the baby. Okay, so I'm just like, wow. And, oh, and I'm sorry, Bunny, but I was unable, as per your request, to strangle a hooker before the show today. But I did, in fact, uh, narfle the Garthok. You, you did. You did. Good. I, I you know, yeah. just every now and then, I think it would just add a little spice to the show if every now and then we, we could throw in a dead hooker. A dead hooker, yeah. Or even a yeah. franken it, hooker. It's like, it's, like, it's like when you used to get a full tank of gas, you'd get like a dinner plate or something. Yeah, exactly. Or or an air yeah, freshener. Kind of the same thing. Yeah. Or an air freshener. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So so you do know what narfling the Garthok is, right? Uh I've never exactly heard that particular phrase, but I, I think I got the idea. Do you know where it comes from? No. Conehead. Whenever they go back to the Ooh. Conehead planets and Dan Aykroyd has to fight the monster. That sounds like it was probably the Conehead, Conehead movie. Yeah, the Conehead movie. Yeah, the Conehead movie. Okay. And so now, so now I've yeah, just, no, I've, I just remember it. I've, I've just uh, sort of like um, acquisitioned it to mean, you know, punching the Pope or, you know, choking the chicken. Beating and the stuff. So it's like one of my favorites. Exactly. You know, punishing the Pope, uh, you know. And uh, so it, it's like any time I'd be out at a bar, I'd be like, not getting late tonight, you must not for the golf <laughs> You must narfle the Garthok. So, for all the kitties out there, that's narfling the Garthok. Pick it up, use it, make it a make it a part of your everyday life. So they they were pretty nice to you in jail. Did did you make any friends? I did not. I was in a cell by myself because uh-huh. I told them I had I told them I had PTSD and bipolar. And they said, uh, so would you, uh, you know, would you want a cellmate or would you prefer to be in a cell by yourself? I said, well, I don't play well with others. And they were like, okay, you can have a cell by yourself then. But no, they were extremely nice. I have a feeling a lot of them were like new or something. They were so nice. There was one guy, though. There was one guy on a power trip. Oh, my God, dude. Captain Power Trip to the rescue. It was unbelievable, dude. I waited five and a half hours to make a phone call. He kept coming to my cell window and going, just one more minute. Just I'm, I'm really busy. Just one more minute. <laughs> you know. 
So I've decided that I'm going to find a very large Rambo style knife with like, you know, the brass knuckle handle. Uh huh. And, 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 and stuff it up my ass and go back to jail for something. Handle first, of okay. course. Any, any particular reason? Well, yeah, I need a shiv. So I can take care of Captain Power Drill. <laughs> yeah. But no, this sounded this sounded like a plan, like I will get a big knife and I will go back to prison. Well, not prison, city jail. Well, city jail, but it's like like your intention is to go with the knife in your ass as opposed to like not going. <laughs> yes. My psychiatrist have <clears throat> My psychiatrist asked me once if I had a plan, and I told him, I always have a plan. <laughs> so, that's my plan now. So, what's up with you, buddy? What's going on in your uh, wild, I, wacky world? I, I, I heard a good joke. I actually, I actually, I saw it on the internet recently. Um, <clears throat> businessman walks into a, into a hotel, and he looks at the receptionist and says, you know, I hope the porn is disabled. And she goes, no, it's regularly, you disgusting pig. <laughs> Guy walked, so I walk into a bar, and the bartender asked me, what do you have? And I said, surprise me, sir. He showed me naked pictures of my wife. Oh, I don't get no respect. <laughs> That's Rodney Dangerfield for the kiddies out there. If you don't know him, you need to get to know him. He was Andrew Dice Clay before Andrew Dice Clay was Andrew Dice Clay before Andrew Dice Clay was Andrew Dice Clay. Oh God, definitely. Yeah, definitely. So, and it took him forever to become popular. It did. He was like know. in his seventies or something by yeah. the time he became popular. Yeah. So he was kind of short lived just because he was like. Short lived. <laughs> exactly, you know. Speaking of dying generation, he was, he was like, he was, I said, speaking of dying generation, he was like, I think him and, uh, and Soupy Sales and, uh, no, God, what was his name? I can't remember the, the Jewish guy who got in all, in all that trouble during the 1950s and didn't have a career again until the 1980s. Yeah, you know, and I was, I, I just had his name in my head recently. Yeah. Don't remember him, but yeah. Those guys. So I was doing an impression of him. I loved I loved his dialect in particular. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Cuz he had a he had a heavy Yiddish dialect. Yeah. And it's not Henny Youngman either. Jackie Mason? Jackie, Jackie Mason. Mason. Jackie Mason. Yeah. Got in trouble for telling off-color jokes during the 1950s on Jack Parr. And uh, that that, that pretty, and yeah, and that pretty much ended his career until the 1980s. Whenever Dangerfield yeah. became popular, all of a sudden all those comedians became popular. You know, vaudeville comedians. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I, uh, I, had a, I, I had an idea for a contest, real quick. Okay. Any time that that I come up with like an idea for a movie, a title for a movie, or a short story, or something like that, I do a search of the internet. Okay. And whenever you came up with the name Dying Generation, I did a search of YouTube. Do you know there are really? bands, like five or six different bands with songs called Dying Generation? Really? I think oh, we should have a contest. Then? Yeah. And let the listeners decide which version, which song, Dying Generation, we should use as maybe a partial intro to our show. Yeah, I already got one on the way, though. Oh, you do? Yeah, my friend Liz today is already working on it. <laughs> oh, damn it, Billy. This would be fun. Come on. I want it. I want it. Well, because I, I, needed, I needed the music for Bob, you know, mm -hmm. and I hadn't worked with her in, in a fucking while now, man. It's been like some smokes. Yeah. Um, you know, so I didn't want to give her, like, like just fifty bucks, you know. Yeah. Um. So I asked her to do music for Bob. I asked her to do music for Dying Generation. I asked her to do music for uh, Pope on Film, and I gave her one hundred and fifty. So, so now the music for Dying Generation is it going to be 
uh, uh, in the spirit of the Grateful Dead? Uh, I hope not. No, it's not. Uh, I, I had hope not. Her... <laughs> <laughs> what could be better? What could be better than the Grateful Dead? I mean, aren't most of them dead anyways already? Yeah. Uh, I had asked her. I think I think maybe the guy who plays. Was... Go ahead. I asked her to give me something that was like really kind of a heavy and aggressive punk. Oh, okay, and cool. She, and she's she's going to do some vocals for me as well. Cool. Yeah, I was so, thinking, you know, Grateful Dead because I think the only living member is the guy who played the triangle. <laughs> I'm I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure. They yeah. they succumb they succumb to fish, is what happened to them. Fish <laughs> fish and my morning jacket came in and and it was all over. Really, I, I had no idea that they were that popular. Who the Grateful Dead or Fish? Fish. Oh my morning jacket. Oh yeah, Fish. Oh my God, dude. With with the with the college yippies. Oh yeah, they're huge. <laughs> That's like Wilco. A lot of people have never heard of that band, but they're like huge with like folk rockers. They're like the the number one folk rock band. Yeah. Uh, well, you kind of you probably kind of missed it because you were incarcerated. But uh, Columbus Day really kind of pissed me off. Is it because of your Indian oh, heritage? Uh, what's that? I said, is it because of your Indian heritage? Um. No. No. It was all the. It was all the. Liberal whining, you know, there are so many times when I hate liberals just as much as I hate conservatives. Uh huh. You know, all the whining about he didn't really discover America, he was mean to the Indians, and all this stuff, which, you know, fine. Okay. I'm fine with that, you know. But you're the complacent assholes who won't do fucking anything for what's going on in the world right the hell now. Uh Uh-huh. But you're concerned about what happened five fucking hundred years ago. Uh Uh-huh. And you're going to take a stand. Well, that's like the thing you... That's like the thing you posted on... (laughs) That's like the the thing you posted on uh, the uh, uh, Facebook the other day that said, uh, how many Republicans does it take to change a light bulb? None yeah. because they'd rather just sit there in the dark and blame Obama. Yeah. <laughs> no, I saw I was walking up to the store today to go get a Gatorade, right? And I see right. this sign that says Stop Socialism. So I walk up to the sign and I look and it says Vote Strictly Republican. And I'm like, Okay, so this is about okay. Obamacare. We have Obamacare and it's socialism. Has anybody yeah. in the Republican Party looked at their paycheck, and looked at the money that is taken out of their paycheck every single time for Medicare, Mm -hmm. you're already paying for health care. You're just not getting it. (laughs) Hello? You're already paying, like, Mm -hmm. I was paying, like, $42 a paycheck, and guess what? I wasn't getting shit. Yeah. Yeah, so, I don't know, man. I, I I don't know how I don't know how the Republicans do it, where where they convince the part of the population that certain things would benefit the most. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. What the hell are are poor rural people? You know, why are they so concerned about big corporations' fucking money? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Well, you know, you have yeah. the Libertards and the Republicans. Mm-hmm. The Republicans. That's my new thing, the Republicans. I, I, I like it. I like the ring of it because when, whenever anybody gets to just two different extremes, yeah. You know, it's like, oh, man, come on. Calm, you know, just calm down. <laughs> come on, people now. Smile on your brother. Everybody get together. Try to love yeah. one another. You know, I, right now. and just, just kind of like, for like my whole voting history, I was pretty much happy with a Republican president for a term or two, a Democratic president for a term or two, 
Republican, you know, so that we can keep a certain balance. <laughs> yeah. Know? Let's make sure the government doesn't do anything. But now they are so, oh, please. <laughs> That's doing it? My voting style? <laughs> You're voting, it is. Your voting style is making sure that the government doesn't do anything at all. I actually have friends. I mean, no, it's so that it's so that they don't get too fucking far out of hand. Yeah, but now, but now they're all just so goddamn wacky. Like I don't know if I trust the Republican fucking office again. Yeah, you know, I the only party I trust is the Green Party anymore because they won't legalize marijuana. I think that's what the Green Party means. Yeah, not sure. And and oh 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 I don't know if I mentioned okay. this on uh, last last time show, but starting on October sixth in Harris County, if you are a first time offender, you can carry up to two ounces of marijuana on your person in Harris County, Texas, which is Houston. And on the news two weeks ago, uh-huh. they announced that in twenty fifteen. They are going to initiate medical marijuana in the state of Texas. So basically, you know what that means? Do you know what that means? Tell me. That means that means that pot smokers of America are raping Nancy Reagan's rotting corpse. That sounds like fun. Is she dead? If not, even better. Oh, she's got to be. No, it would be so much better if she was dead. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, it's like that, it's like that meme that goes around Facebook. You know, we had a, we had a war on drugs and drugs increased. We had a war on terrorism and terrorism got worse. Hey, next, let's have a war on jobs and money. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> whoever wrote that meme, I'm sorry for stealing your meme, but it was just so clever. I had to share it. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. So what else has been going uh, on with you? You you smoke any good weed lately, there, uh, Bunny? Tell me about uh, the, tell me about the weed experience there in Colorado this week. Uh, not much because again, I, I don't smoke a whole hell of a lot. Um, my car no, that that expired. was my job. A, yeah, my car just expired. I have an appointment for November fourth to get that renewed. Oh yeah. Uh, but like I have plenty of dope laying around. I. I yeah. Today is the first day I smoked. Um, I don't know since sometime last week. You are not doing your part for the legalization of marijuana. <laughs> you are slacking. I, 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 I am. I am. I am getting. I'm getting my card renewed when I don't have to anymore. That's so true. That's you don't have like to my anymore. political stand. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So that the yeah. federal government can come kick in your door. <laughs> because we all need a reason for the federal government to come kick on our door, ladies and gentlemen. It's just a matter have, of time. Seen, we all need a reason. Have you, have you seen the episodes of Bob? Did I send you the, the preview episodes of Bob? Because like, yes, you did. Once that's released, once that's released, the federal government is going to kick in my fucking door anyway. <laughs> <laughs> With a team of famous psychiatrists, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna it's gonna be like yeah. that movie Outbreak. They're gonna have you in like one of those little tents with everybody in the white suits. The bubble <laughs> yeah. suits, you know. Uh, Don't get near him, he smoked way too much marijuana, it might be contagious. Well, you know, with uh, the whole Ebola outbreak, you know, they they they're ready. You know, they've already got the white suits. So. Well, see, have you heard my conspiracy theory on this? No, let's hear it. I haven't, I haven't okay. really heard a good one. Okay, the awake movement for a couple of years now has been talking about how FEMA has been uh, buying up rounds of ammunition and guns and tanks. FEMA. Okay. Right. So and they have concentration camps ready to go and stuff like that. Ex- yeah. Exactly, all of that. So what do we do? to ensure martial law in the United States. We bring an Ebola patient over here and let Ebola get loose. Mm-hmm. There you go, martial this law. This does make sense. There, there you go. I So to the awake movement, I toast you. I usually don't, but here's to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Now, the question I keep having, though, is, and I'm going to do an episode of Bob about this, because Bob can say this a lot better than I can. Uh, <laughs> why? Why would the government want to impose martial law? We cannot be more complacent as a fucking people. They have done outrageous goddamn things to us in the past ten fucking years. It's unbelievable to me, you know? So they can take our guns. Nobody, nobody, nobody much cares. (laughs) You know? They can take our guns. They want to take our guns. (laughs) Don't you know that's what everything's about? You know, you know, whenever they replaced uh, saccharin with NutraSweet and Fresca. It was all about taking our guns. Didn't you know that, Bunny? I, I did know about that one. Well, just okay. the Fresca. Just the Fresca <laughs> part. <thank you. laughs> just the Fresca you part. Know. <laughs> so, so it wasn't I'm about ruining the flavor of one of the greatest soft drinks ever created. Yeah, it was about taking I, our guns. I, I was talking to somebody about um, the coming civil war. And I was like, you know, you need two sides to fight, though. And, you know, like the most energy any American citizen can get in outrage is to, to make a meeting and put it up on fucking Facebook. And that's it. <laughs> exactly. Just, so just here's the you, civil war coming. Fire, fire the first salvo ver, via meme. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, there are actually two sides, those with guns and those without. It's going to be a very short civil war. (laughs) You know? It's going to be very short. It's going to be, hi, we're the people with the guns. Oh, okay. (laughs) Done, you know? It's it's not even a fucking movie of the week. You know, it's, it's it's barely an episode of Webster, okay? That's all I'm saying. It's barely even an web- episode of Webster. Mm-hmm. It's over in it's over in 15 seconds. <laughs> oh, oh! I was going to ask you something too. Yeah. So, so, so most of the people I was in jail with were in jail for traffic tickets, and the other half were in jail for paraphernalia. Okay. So, how does it feel to live in a state where it's no longer par- paraphernalia? It's accessory, or is it accessories? Wait, accessorize. Uh, wasn't, that a, wasn't that a Eugene Ionesco play? I do not know. Okay. How does it feel to live in a state where it's no longer paraphernalia, it's accessories? I I, I do not know about um, actual paraphernalia or accessories you know, impacting me in particular, except that I can buy one, but... Are you a joint smoker? Is that what it is? It's outrageous and magical to, like, walk into a store, (laughs) you know? And buy the Cypress Hill six-foot bong and not have to look over your shoulder while you're doing it? Yeah, and be like, I I would like an eighth of that. Exactly. Like, well, that one first, and and I'd like a few loose joints. Yeah, I'd like a few loose joints, and could I have a gram of Schlitz, please? <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And I, I usually go to Levity Levity on a uh, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. uh by Lucky Dragon. And plug 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 plug. Give him free weed. The audience is riveted by the local direction. (laughs) The the local color, that's what that is. That's production value. Yeah, there's someone in Amsterdam listening to this right now going like, I know the place. (laughs) It's Bill. I'm telling you, it's Bill. (laughs) Um, You know, to to just go in there in broad daylight, and I was laughing to Jeannie about it because I got a couple of loose joints. Joints, when you first light them, are a lot easier on me, and then they get a lot rougher, you know, yeah. after a few yeah. minutes of smoking. But, but it, 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 it comes in a vacuum-sealed printed envelope. And it's like, really? really? 
this is amazing. This is such a professional product. <laughs> mine, the the place I used to go to, mine came in little test tubes with a cork in them. They used to do that. They used to do like little test tubes that had a snap cap on them. Yeah. Uh, and then they then they moved over to this. Yeah. And it's like cheaper. What the what the fuck happened to pre- somebody presentation somebody in this country? God damn it. Yeah, somebody out there is cornering the joint market. Somebody is, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but it's funny. Like, everybody will start going to that guy. <laughs> they will actually. Hey, it's the joint guy. Quick, they're gonna have like a little a little truck. Ding 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 ding. ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Rolling down the street. It's the joint guy. Everybody run. Yeah, it's no, no. Same you know, have like a, okay, a little same guy, like half, a, a really same happy truck. like half, a really happy half stone clown on top. You know, <laughs> no, but it's playing war pigs. It's playing what? War pigs. War pigs. It's just like five seven. <laughs> Generals gather in their masses. That's. Black Sabbath for the, joint the guy. kiddies it's who joint. don't know. It's the joint guy. That's like one of the yeah, funniest and the things. Guy, and the joint guy would pull over and stop, and a uh-huh. little a little sign would pop out and say, caution, stoned people. <laughs> stoned people crossing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like the funniest damn thing I've seen on Saturday Night Live in a long time was Melissa McCarthy. Do you know who that is? No. She's a really heavy set uh, comedian. She's been in some really fucking funny movies. She is just, I mean, okay, she is okay, out yeah. of her goddamn mind. She did this thing she where she goes into a bank to get a loan for a business. And, her, and the guy is like, well, what do you need the money for? Well, I'm going to buy a van. And on the side, it'll say, the pizza lady. And I'll drive down the street. And all the kids will chase after the van going, hey, it's the pizza lady. And I'll go, honk, honk. Hi, kids. <laughs> I can't. I think it's called the Pizza Eater. So if you can find that online, please watch it because you will lose your fucking mind into some of the most <laughs> insane comedy I've seen in a long time. Um, I I, I was sainted. You were sainted by the Pope. I, I I am by the Pope. I am a saint now. Saint Bunny? How, how, how cool is that? Saint Bunny of what? What? Saint Bunny of Ecclesiastes? Uh, no, it's just Saint Bunny. You know, we don't have categories like that, you know, but... Uh, so no, 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 no Saint Bunny of Assisi? No, Steve, so just Steve Glendo is Bunny. so happy. Steve Glendo, <laughs> the Pope for the Church of Ed Wood, is so happy doing his podcast, he's Saint today. Nice. I want to be sainted. So I am, I am actually, I'd like to have my I'd, I'd like to have my penis sainted. Actually, I'm going to put that shit down on fucking job applications from here on out. Yeah. There you go, Saint, Saint, Saint Bunny. <laughs> yeah. I have been sainted by the Church of of of. Uh, um, yeah. Church yeah. Why am I, why why am I why am I blanking on his name? The, the Church of Ed Wood. Ed Wood. Ed Wood. There we go. Jesus, mm-hmm. man. I stopped smoking pot, and why? I still can't remember anything. <laughs> it's 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 really fucked up. So, like, that's the best thing to happen to me in a long, long time. I am really happy being a saint. <laughs> Did you get one of those cool little balls on a stick that you, like, shake holy water on people with? No, we're a very small religion. We can't afford that kind of crap. Did, did I ever tell you my story about that? What? No. Okay. My ex-wife was Catholic, okay? So she wanted to have the children. She said baptized, but I don't think that's what it's called in the Catholic Church. I think it's called christened. Uh, But she wanted to have the kids baptized in the Catholic Church. So I'm like, okay, fine. I'm not Catholic, but I'll go do this. You know, I'm a Buddhist. I'm going to go ahead and do this for you, okay? So we go to the church, and we're standing up by the altar, and the priest comes out in his robes, and he has this big metal ball. I mean, this thing is like the size of a freaking softball made of gold, on top of this stick, and it has holy water in it. And he comes up, and he shakes it on my daughter, Megan, when she was a baby, and she shakes it on my wife, 
And she, he goes to shake it on me, and I, like, jerk back because I'm afraid he's going to, like, hit me in the forehead with it, right? And later my wife, and later my ex-wife tells me, oh, my God, I thought you were going to fall on the floor screaming, it burns, it burns! <laughs> I was like, no, you just think I'm an asshole. You just think I'm an asshole. I'm not really an asshole. I just play one on television. You know? So that's my that's my story about the christening ball. I want yeah. two of those. Whenever I get like testicular cancer, right. I want two of those. So whenever I walk around, I'm like clanking, clanking gold and like spraying holy water all over everyone. You know? Did you just piss yourself? <laughs> no, it's holy water. Go ahead, bless yourself. You know? <laughs> just go ahead. Just go ahead and scrape some off. Put it on your forehead. It's good for you. Jesus loves you. Well, her being Catholic makes a bit of sense. Her being I'm Catholic? Pretty sure that, I'm pretty sure the, uh, the the nuns give out, like, cunt lessons. Yeah. Well, she went, well, let's not be that harsh. She wasn't, I called her a cunt a couple of times, but she wasn't really, she was just a bitch. She was the next level yeah. down. You know, she wasn't, she wasn't a total pro, let's put it that way, okay? Uh, but, I will. I, I I I never never want to date a woman that's not Catholic, because those women are so fucking pent up when they're teenagers that whenever they start having sex, it's it's all it's all possible. It's it's like that line in Almost Famous. It's all happening. You know, <laughs> everything you could ever dream of in your sexual reality and some shit that you've only seen on the fucking internet that made you turn away in disgust. Catholic girls. <laughs> do it. All the listeners out there, Bill, Bill, do it now. Go out to a bar. Find a cat. Do it. <laughs> I've heard that about Jewish women, too, except that whenever you marry them, all of a sudden they don't even want to have sex anymore. I've also heard that about Canadian women, which is kind of strange. About Canadians? I've heard that Canadian women are kind of sex. Actually repressed. So if we have any Canadian okay, listeners, you there, you can, oh, I was saying that I've heard that Canadian women are sexually repressed. Really? Well, yeah. if we don't have any Canadian listeners, listeners yet. That's going to be a goal. That's what I'm saying. If, if we have any Canadian listeners, if somebody can chime in on this and tell us that your wife is a Hellcat or something, that would be great. But I always wanted to fuck the shit out of Alanis Morissette until I heard that about Canadian women. And then I was like, oh, no wonder she was with the guy from Full House. <laughs> you know, so it just, it all made sense all of a sudden. <laughs> so, yes, please, Canadian listeners, dying at undeadcow.com or on our Facebook group, our Facebook page. Let's Anybody, see. for God's sakes, please. Email us. We're dying here. We're a dying generation. We're dying. Please email us. Give us something to talk about other than our sad, pitiful, fucking, soon-to-be, short-lived lives. He said as he cracked another miniature bottle of wine. Do, do you think? Do you think he? Uh, it has anything to do with the weather in Canada? With the what? The weather? Yeah. Well, no, man. It's always cold up there, man. You know you want to cuddle. You know you want to get underneath the fucking blankets and fucking do the fucking rock and roll hoochie coo. It can't be that. I think it's I think it's because there's uh I think like Protestant is like the major religion, right? In in Canada, from what I understand, and I don't really understand much about Canada except I do know how they got their name. Do you know this story? Uh, I I would I always imagined uh. No, I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> so supposedly the story goes like this. The Canadians are up there in their country, and they're like, hey, we need a good name, you know, for our country, you know, something good like USA, you know. So let's uh, maybe do a C-A-N-A-D-A. <laughs> That's where you laugh. That's where you laugh. Insert in, insert canned laughter here. Can we? Do we have anything from the Lu, Lucille Ball show that we could just like press a button? You know, like maybe from the episode where she's like shoving all the chocolates in her mouth off the conveyor belt. 
Yeah. Can we like get that and just, know, like, punch it in occasionally? There's, there's got to be a way to be able to do inserts. I just don't know how to do them yet. At, okay. at one point, I would like us to move over to Skype to get to better sound quality. Would that would that be any kind of a problem for you? Uh, once I get out of my car, no. I just yeah. don't want people seeing me sitting in my car unshowered. No, 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 no. Not Skype video, just the Skype audio. Oh, I think we should do video. We're two fucked up looking individuals. I think people would get a real chuckle out of it. Um, are you not ready? To, are you not ready to bear your ass like that, Bunny? Dude, I have a whole show with me in makeup and a dress. Okay. That's true. That's what true. That, and, 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 what's, and what's the name of that show? That is Bob's Dirty Shorts. And I've I've been sneaking out those same two episodes, you know, to a few a few friends and things like that. And it's getting really good reaction. And you let know, let me like, let me tell you my opinion, okay? Yeah. My opinion is that Bob's Dirty Shorts is as if David Lynch directed a late night horror show host. Yeah. Okay, it's that fucking Thank twisted. You. It's not I'll take that. That's, that's what I'll I want. take that. That's that's it's it, it's fully twisted when it comes out, people. You need to get on board with this because uh if it doesn't break your mind to the point where you need Thorazine, you just you have no appreciation. Yeah. So, and let me tell you something, dude. Doing it and shooting it, and we're going to shoot more episodes this weekend, too. It was so cathartic, you know? To do to do that. To, do the, to actually do the show. Like, when I finished doing the show for the night, like, I felt, like, clean. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't know how. I've seen the because, show, and I don't know how that's possible, Bunny. Oh, because cause every now and then you'll just tap into some emotion that's just sitting there for no fucking reason, and and I, I'll just go with it. So, you know? so a few people... It, it was a point wanted, I almost fucking cried, <laughs> you know? If, I if few people wanted, it was almost an episode. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, if you people want to see Bunny go through some free therapy, Bob's Dirty Shorts. And, and that's it. And those are, those are the better episodes. <laughs> All I'm saying is it's, it's fucking twisted, dude. I won't mention the those particular. Are... I, I won't mention the particular one, but you know what I'm talking about. The doctor. Yeah. Fucking what? twisted. The doctor. Doctor, yeah. 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 Well, you, just, yeah. Uh, just fucking I twisted. In particular, I did that in particular for the sneak peek. You know. Mm-hmm. I think those two episodes, because cause they're different. Mm-hmm. You know? The first and, one is... And it's, and it's not the lame-ass back. bullshit you're getting on this show, people. It's good quality entertainment. <laughs> you don't have to listen to so, two pompous dickheads talk for 45 minutes. You got little, little, little snippets of just insane comedy and, uh, yeah, brilliant. Because... Uh, I really want for that for when that show comes on, you know, when each episode goes up, like you might think what Bob is about, and then it's something else. Yes. You know. Yes, I watch. I watch the test, and yes, it's it's all completely different, but 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 held together by that narrow thread of Bob. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. yeah. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that you should probably seek medication for schizophrenia. Just just based on viewing the episodes myself. Or smoke more pot. Uh Reverend Steve tells me he's gonna use episodes of Bob to to kinda like attack people on the internet. <laughs> to do what? To kinda like attack people on the internet if he's if you find somebody who's like really kind of stuck up and snotty and thinks he'll send him an episode of Bob, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like, you know, what would really be cool, but we would all have to pull together this, with for this, you know, if we could turn Bob 
into the new Rick Roll. Into the new what? The new Rick Roll. Rick Roll, yes. Never gonna yeah. let you or, up, never gonna let you down. Or, or like Goatsy, you know? Yeah. Oh, you want to hear something twisted? You'll love this. You'll love this. Yeah. I don't know if I told you this idea or not, right? I've been down here in Texas for two and a half years, and I, I have not, have not yet found a band that will let me sing for them. And I have a beautiful singing voice. I really do. Okay. But nobody wants to do the music that I want to do, right? Right. So I have decided that I heard a rumor uh, that's supposedly true that Tiffany and Debbie Gibson, do you remember these people from the 80s? Yes, indeed. The the team Popstresses, that they got their start by doing single-person karaoke shows at shopping malls where they would get up and they would sing an hour's worth of music themselves. Nobody else would get up, just them, right? Okay. So I've decided at 49 years old, almost 50, that I'm going to do this myself, that I'm going to start a karaoke show that is just me singing for like two or three sets and go to small coffee shops, and small bars and perform this one-man karaoke show. And the band's name is going to be that red symbol that's just like the circle with the slash through it that means nothing or don't or whatever, right? You know what I'm talking about? That's going to be the band's name. It's sort of like that, you know, cryptic shit that Prince did when he changed his name to the symbol that was like the male-female dragon tulip thing that scared the shit out of me. I have no idea what the fuck that was about. So, I'm going to do this, but I've decided that I'm going to have my computer set up to run the karaoke music, right? Yeah. And that will be facing me so I can see the lyrics in case I lose my place or something, so I know what song I'm singing. And then I'm going to have a separate screen facing the audience that has this, like, visuals going on it. And, and any time that anybody goes to leave, I'm going to push a button on my computer, and it's going to bring up dancing kittens and puppies that dance to the music. <laughs> does that sound cool or not? That does sound cool. Just all of a sudden, dancing puppies and kids. La, la, la. I could be like doing ACDC, Highway to Hell, and all of a sudden, dancing puppies and kittens, if anybody goes to believe. <laughs> but I was going to call it No Band, and then I did a search on the internet, like I was telling you before, and I found there were like actually two bands, one called No Band and one called The No Band. And so mine is right. just going to be that symbol So it's totally cool if you know what that symbol means. So whenever you go to see a club or a a coffee shop and their marquee and you just see that symbol on it, you know that I'm playing. And just have T-shirts that just have that symbol on it. Yeah. Is that marketing or what? I think that's a good idea. Yeah. I definitely think think that's a good idea. Yeah. So that's that's yeah. I actually found a thing on piratebay.se. If you do not know about this site, seek it out immediately. It is free everything. <laughs> I went on there today and found this guy who posted 22 volumes of two and a half gigabytes each of karaoke music. Really, twenty nine thousand songs. Ooh. Of pop, rock, soul, and oldies. Do you think I'll be able to find maybe 180 to 240 songs out of that that I could do a karaoke show with? Uh, maybe not. You know, maybe twenty nine thousand yeah. songs. Yeah, but I mean, we're talking. We're talking about every fog dancing. You know, how much of it is real, honest to God, fog dancing music? You know, actually, actually, none of it. It it, it ranges That's from I mean, it, it stuff. It it goes from like uh, ABBA to B.J. Thomas to AC/DC to uh, Stroke Nine to Bare Naked Ladies. It's it's a full range of That's music. So Twenty nine thousand songs. That's so huh? yesterday though. Can't you feel this country yearning out for a good clog dancing band? I do, actually. Do you want to hear something fucked up? You know, so so that that's going the wrong direction. What? Do you want to hear something fucked up? 
Oh, I grew up I always. I grew up in a small town in Illinois, and I'm going to give a shout out to my hometown right now, ladies and gentlemen, Shanahan, Illinois. Ooh! Town of 800 people when I lived there. We weren't even on the freaking map when I lived there, okay? But okay. there was such a large Polish community in Chicago and Joliet and Morris, the three so largest towns surrounding it, right. that we actually did square Square dancing and polka in school as part of gym class. Ooh. Polka. Ooh. Fucking polka. Do you hear me, buddy? They, they, polka. They like square dance, yeah. Polka. Yeah. And we you know what the worst pol- part was? Polka can do? save this country. Do you know what the polka worst part is? and banjo. And they can. They can save this country from its fucking demise. You can save it from going down the shit tubes. You're right. It absolutely can. But you know what the worst part was? The worst part was is having to fucking dance around holding a brown schlager. It was it was unbearable. It was just a child a child should not have to do that. <laughs> to get a C in gym. <laughs> exactly, dancing polka with a Braunschweiger just to get a just to get a C. Cause fuck volleyball. Yeah. yeah, fuck volleyball and basketball. God damn it, we're polka dancing with Braunschweiger. Yeah. Well, buddy, I hate to say this, What's up? but it's dinner time here in Texas. Okay. So we're going to have to uh, end this episode. Do you have anything to plug? I know you do. Uh, gee, yeah. Well, there is the Pope on film. Um, been covering a lot of good and interesting movies there. Um, and Bob's 30 Shorts coming out on Halloween. And where can they find those? Uh, let's see. The Pope on film, you can find it on, You can well, you can, pretty much the same as, as us here. It has its own Facebook page. Uh, it has its own Twitter, at Pope on Film. Um, it's also on Stitcher, and also on YouTube, at Undead Cow Film. All right. And uh, I have a Haunted Trailer, now available on DVD, starring the wonderful hedgehog, Ron Jeremy. He is fucking hilarious in it. And I have my books, The Alleys Ran Red, a horror yeah. detective novel, a book of short stories called Dreaded Friday and Other Tales, and under the nom de plume, Maxwell Robeson, the women's action adventure, the spy in mom's clothing, and coming soon, possibly even, to a theater near you, getting schooled in 80s-style slasher flick. So that just about wraps it up. It might possibly be coming to theaters, yes. Oh, that would be awesome. That would be it was awesome. it was it was, was filmed in four K, so there is a possibility we might get theatrical distribution. Yeah. Uh I was I was pretty much thinking of uh getting a couple of copies of Haunted Trailer and getting one to the Reverend and doing a show. That would be great. That would be absolutely great. Now, yeah. if you want to find out more about the uh getting school, do a yeah. search on Google for Indiegogo. Getting Schooled, Finishing Funds, and you can see the trailer at the site that comes up. Cool. All right. And it's the Breakfast Club meets what? Breakfast Club meets a killer in a wheelchair. Yeah. Trapped in a high school. <laughs> it's good stuff. I've, I've, seen, I've fun, seen a recent... Man. I've seen a recent cut of it, and it's a actually a, a, a quality film. I'm I'm yeah. very impressed. Uh, we, my brother Chuck did a great job directing it. Excellent. And so Excellent. that's about it. He is Bunny Williams, and I am Stephen Scott Norfolk for Dying Generation. Join us next week. Have a good one.